I mean, my grandma's definitely, she's worth talking about. I mean, she was a, I mean, as everyone who has that figure in their life, you know, the matriarch, the one that's that's there that takes care of everyone else, they're, you know, worth talking about. I mean, they're just, there's those great people in each of our lives. I mean, everyone has that person that they look up to. And losing that person is very, it's difficult. I, I experience, like, my grandmother's nature and, you know, when I do parkour, just like, I just, uh, you have this, this connection to like the things around you and the obstacles around you. Parkour isn't really like about pounding through an obstacle or like, you know, like forcing your way through. It's about moving with it and moving around it. And by moving with your environment, I mean, gracefully, you know. Brian is, what is Brian? He's determined. He is the one, like, when he sets his mind to something, he does it, but he's creative at the same time, and, like, he's quirky. Yeah, I mean, and you can see it in his style, too, a lot, because he'll be like, I want to do this, which is completely random. Nobody would ever think of it, and he just does it, and it's sick. So he's, he's really, he's got a lot of focus, that guy does. So that's who Brian is. There's Zach, Zach Holmes. I'm afraid you're gonna die one day, you know, because you're so freaking crazy. But whatever. More power to you, you're inspirational. He's like our fearless, like go-to guy. Like when, when shit hits the fan and everyone's scared, you go to Zach. Zach will do it. No questions. My dear old fat pad. I remember when you were heavy and we used to pick on you on the bus. Yeah, and you guys were the assholes. Remember this when no one was friends with me? Bacon so I, I had no friends. I, was, I used to sleep on the back of the bus going to school. <laughs> and then RJ, while I was asleep, would come up and smack me in the face while I was sleeping. I'd wake up and be like, what the hell is that? And then they always be like, you know, it was like every time. I don't think I ever did that. Yes, you did. You were with Tom and RJ. And now you guys, three of you guys are my best friends. <laughs> oh, Pat was fat. Pat's always like, he's always the one that I, I see Pat as like the, the one who shows a lot of promise because Pat has got a, he's got a lot of heart whenever he does anything too. But I can see him being able to like take it like, like to the next level because I think a lot of stuff with him is very personal and whatever Pat does goes along with parkour. I mean, I don't, I don't want to see anybody walk away from something that they really want to try. So I'm going to be there, help them, push them, and they're going to get it. And it's really, it's a really great feeling when, like, you, you see your friend, like, they overcome that fear or that obstacle and they make it. That's really cool.
clears your mind. It's just like running or any other sport that would, it just relaxes you and it gives you a runner's high and it just keeps you moving and you can impress your friends with it. You have to be um, tough, you have to be lean, you have to be limber, you have to be quick, agile, but there's also this mental discipline that you need to maintain and I feel that um, I've, I've definitely gained a, a lot more self-confidence by just doing parkour every week, you know, seeing this one obstacle where like maybe a year ago I could say, oh my god, I don't think I can make that jump, but right, right now it's like, no sweat off my back, I could do it, so it definitely helps with my self-confidence and, and, and my drive and my perseverance to, to try new things. I don't know, some, some adults come up to me asking questions like, oh, what you doing? Like, you're just running around a playground, like, kids aren't supposed to be here. And, and they ask you to leave. And and I, and I try to explain to them respectfully, of course, that, you know, it's, uh, I just say that, like, I'm a city gymnast. I don't know, something like that. Oh, oh. oh it's weird, it's all. When I'm doing it, I just feel like I'm free from everything. It feels it feels great when I'm like I'm jump off something. It feels like nothing can touch you. If I do backflips on the trampoline more, then I'm probably gonna be able to do a backflip. Yeah, just like your brother. Did you start doing this, or did your brother get you to do it? I just started doing it. Yeah. You want to be as good as your brother? Yes. Your brother. I started out young, so. Yeah. So by the time that you're Zach's age, you're going to be like super good. Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. You want to do this for a long time, or, you know? I'm probably going to do this until I'm like, I don't know. So what? sat down on the couch and she was sitting next to me and uh, she looked at me and she said um, that if I needed any money obviously because that's she's always asking, she was always asking me if I needed any money I said no I said do you, do you need anything she said I need you to quit smoking so I did grandma she looked at me she raised her eyebrows she said really I said yeah you know I've been I've been like I said I've been doing a lot of running grandma you know and I'm I'm trying to be healthy, and she looked at me, and she just like, you know when someone looks at you and it just pierces you right then and there, she looked at me and she said that, that she was really proud of me, you know, and, uh, and it, it just hit home. I told her that she had to wake up, you gotta wake up, you gotta wake up, if you don't, we're gonna take you off the ventilator and you'll die, you have to wake up, and she was unresponsive. I told her that, I knew that she would. That night I went home, I, I just, I humbled myself. Like you just, you, you experience that moment where you're just, you're tiny in this world. And I experienced, I don't know, I don't know what you would call it, but just like a moment of, of complete humbleness, I guess. Next day, I told you my grandma used to pray every day at three o'clock. And uh, the next day I went in there around 3 o'clock, it was like 2.45, my, my grandma hadn't waked, woken up, and uh, and my dad told me, he's like, we're going to take her off the, the respirator now, I said, oh, okay, and when I went over to say goodbye to her, she just opened her eyes and looked, it was one of those stares, like she just saw straight through you, even on, even on, on her deathbed, still, she gave me that, she gave me that look. And it was it was a wonderful thing, and uh, I think that she would be proud of me. Today. She she passed after that. She got to see all of our faces one more time. She was, and we got into you know how I wanted to be like my dad because he's another big role model in my life. My dad is a man, but he doesn't know that I do parkour. But at the end of this documentary, he will. Yeah, he'll, he'll know, and he'll know what it means to me. So I hope that, that my parents are able to see that this really has helped me in a positive way and that, you know, I'm able to experience just life. 
beauty of it.